United Way. Um, if we can bring up Chief Henning, I'll do a uh, status update on the Newcomb and a brief the council. We'll also bring uh, Chuck Bevelheimer up after Chief Henning if you guys uh, have any questions on what transpired this weekend. Uh, good evening. I was asked just to provide a, an update of what the fire department operations were with the Newcomb and, and the status of where we're at now. So I just kind of want to walk you through real quickly. Uh, the call came in about 8.40 in the evening on Friday. Uh, when crews arrived on scene, uh, they, they approached and, and arrived on scene coming down Main Street and did not have much smoke, if any, visible. So a decision was made with one crew to go ahead and commit to do an internal investigation. They entered the building. Upon the arrivals of additional crews, we had a crew uh, go around the back side of the building, and that's when they determined that we actually had fire, active fire, burning in there. And per departmental policy, if there's a fire in that building, we don't fight those fires. So we pulled our crews out immediately and went into defensive mode. Um, the, the alarm structure, we escalated quickly through second, third, fourth, and up to fifth alarm just because of the nature of the situation we had on hand. Not going to get into a lot of details about the firefight other than once we went defensive, our focus shifted primarily to doing um, protecting exposures, exposures just being other buildings nearby that could potentially uh, be involved in, in the fire should it uh, escalate. So our biggest concern because, you know, and this is a little unusual for us, the wind was coming out of the southeast, so we were dealing with the exposure, the primary one being the Gardner Museum and had concerns with uh, fire extending over to there. So focused our crews on the uh, Gardner Museum as well as putting crews on top of the Lincoln Douglas so we could keep an eye on that and the surrounding roof structures to make sure we didn't have any embers creating problems for us there. The firefight actually went pretty well. Um, we were able to contain the fire to the building of origin. Um, the fire did what we expected it would do. It burned its way north until it consumed the entire roof. Um, at that time, we were able to, to essentially get the fire out. If, if you've been by the scene at all, you'll see that the fire essentially burned the top two floors of the building. The rest of the building, it didn't burn down into that. However, there was substantial damage, and that led the city to take the action it did, and somebody else will be speaking about that. A um, couple other things that did have to take place. We had some concerns um, at the southeast part of the building uh, because of the firefight. There's a lot of uh, transmission lines for CIPS there. So at one point, we did, after dealing with the businesses and the patio and the Hotel Elkton being the two primary ones, we let them know that we were going to have to shut the power down, shut the power down for it was less than two hours. And as soon as we had the fire under control and there was no longer a concern there, we got the power back up. So we tried to inconvenience them as little as possible, but we had to be mindful of the safety. We did have three injuries on the fire department. I had to wait to see what the reports came in. One was a trip over a fire hose, and two were just from excessive amounts of smoke inhalation, which you can imagine um, we had a lot of smoke to eat that night. So um, in all, uh, we had 24 firefighters that were called in off-duty in addition to the on-duty personnel. The total cost of the call-in personnel was about right around $4,500 for the night is what we had. That does not include the cost of our fire investigators. Um, we had one fire investigator um, on scene Saturday, Sunday, and today as well, um, working with police department investigator to try to determine cause and origin. And, and that's where I'll just sum up my comments. We did have crews on scene, or investigators on scene all three days. Um, the intent of that was try to determine where the fire started and basically, if at all possible, what caused that fire to start. We, we made the decision very early on that we were not going to put people inside of that structure for safety purposes. It just simply was not a good idea to put them in there. So the attack that we took was as the demolition process took place, we had the investigators there, and as they would get to a portion of the building, they would peel part of it away. We would go up. We would take a look at what's there and then let them move on. We also used our aerial devices to get views from the third, fourth, and fifth floor areas. I can tell you that our determination has been that the fire started on the third floor in the southwest, I'm sorry, southeast portion of the building, the addition. Uh, of the structure. Uh, the fire then spread either through a window or a hallway, but spread kind of north and west into the main portion of the structure and worked its way down a hallway up into the void spaces and extended upward. Um, and that's where the fire broke through uh, the ceiling or the roof area and burned its way to the north and, and we were able to extinguish it. I cannot tell you what caused the fire at this point and I don't know that I will be able to tell you what caused the fire other than more than likely it was a human intervention of some type, whether it was accidental or intentional, don't really know. Um, police department's going to continue to follow up on this and conduct investigations and talk to people. Fire department's role is cause and origin. Try to figure out what caused it. Try to figure out where it happened. Police department follows up with investigation. So that's where we're at. So if you have any questions about the firefighting aspect, I'd be glad to answer. Oh, Alderman Havermill. Uh, no, I, you may have said this, and I may have missed it. No damage to any other surrounding buildings at all. No, not to my knowledge. No. All right. Thank you. Good job. Yes, sir. Are there any other questions for Chief Henning? Alderman Farah? Yes, maybe you or Chief Copley could answer the question. I received an interesting call from a very bright couple that had experience with offering and helping citizens that voluntarily group together.
to offer a reward on the J.C. Penney building. Are you guys considering at any point in putting together a reward for information on this fire? You know, as I'll, to what I'll the probably cause defer was. to Chief Copeland okay. on that. Thank That's you. more his wheelhouse than mine. So. I know some people have been asking if, if you see related ties to we've had a lot of these sporadic fires in the downtown area recently with some of the dumpsters and dumpster the fires dumpsters and, those types of and thing. furniture okay. and stuff like that. Do you think anything's related I'm let Chief there? Copley talk to that one. So. On your question, Alderman Farha, um, that's probably a little early right now. We're, we're starting the interview process, interviewing uh, various people. I wouldn't be opposed to looking at doing that, uh, but at, at this point, uh, I think it's a little too premature. Uh, it's, it's definitely an option if we need it down the road. Regarding the dumpster fires, uh, we have been doing some investigation. There was a, a juvenile suspect that was developed. We've not been able to prove he did the, su the uh, those fires with the dumpsters, but we have been able to verify his whereabouts the night of the Newcomb fire, and he would not have been involved in that. Are there any additional questions for either the police or the fire chief? Okay, thank you. Um, Chuck and Michael, I don't know if you, yeah. And everyone on their desk should have a correspondence uh, from my office and that uh, Michael Seaver had uh, directed towards the city council. I'll, I'll tag team this off to Michael here in a minute, but just give me give you a sort of update of where we were and how the process went. We sat down with the department heads 9 o'clock Saturday morning when we knew we had to address the building. That was obvious because of the, the, the impact on adjacent properties, uh, because of the unstable nature of, of the five-story building with the roof and the lateral supports burnt. Uh, we felt that it needed to come down. Um, with that in mind, uh, we right away, after having conversations with uh, the staff, uh, was tasked with the idea of, of how do we get this down and how fast can we get this down. Um, we contacted seven contractors uh, who uh, local uh, as well as some that are, are connected locally but have assets outside the city and tried to determine you know, who could get here with a, the appropriate equipment that could be tasked with tearing it down and in, in what type of time frame uh, they could get here and how fast they can get it, it down. And, Obviously, my estimates are off already, <laughs> uh, well off. But with that said, um, we did end up uh, uh, contracting with uh, Blick Construction as the information in front of you and Neiman's to sort of do a tag team demo, one operator with a crane and one operator with a backhoe. Uh, and a combination of moving uh, basically from uh, south to north uh, through the building. And that's pretty much what you see right now. And I'll let Michael go into details about the, the, the demolition process. Well, as Chuck said, we, as Chuck said, we did, uh, we contacted as many uh, local contractors, uh, contractors that we believe could arrive on scene in a, in a rather quick fashion and, and be able to mobilize. A lot of folks around here have cranes, but obviously very few do demolition and demolition of structures of that size. I think we were very fortunate to get the ones that we did that were able to, to get on scene yet even Saturday afternoon be set up and ready to go on Sunday. Um, they did indicate uh, that they thought opt very optimistically that they would be able to get through most of the 4th Street side of the building uh, yet by Sunday evening with the hope that they could restore uh, normal traffic flow on 4th Street and on uh, Main, the, the, the traffic exiting the bridge. Um, we encountered a couple of uh, unforeseen obstacles on Sunday morning that, that get, get us a let's late start. We were probably 9 o'clock before the, the crews got started in earnest. Uh, they did experience a couple of equipment malfunctions that r resulted in an hour or hour and a half's worth of downtime. But by and large, they got about 50 to 60 percent through the building uh, as of 6.30, 7 o'clock last night. At that point, they decided to stop, and they were back again this morning at 6.30 and, and resumed. So it, as of uh, tonight, if you've been by, you've seen that they're, they've gone around the corner on Main Street. They're probably halfway uh, along that uh, north wing of the building, uh, which is not nearly as long as the south wing. Uh, I would anticipate that if all goes well, uh, this operation should be concluded by tomorrow night. And um, Michael, do you want to address what the plan is after that or Chuck? Certainly, yeah. The, the idea here was to eliminate the immediate hazard to the public safety, and that is to bring the tall walls down it. With the extent of the fire, 
the lateral support, the diaphragmatic support of the floor ceilings in the building is gone. We, now we have 55 foot tall walls that are unsupported without a roof at the top. Um, at any point, they, any part of it could give way. And, and obviously about half or a third of the way from the, from the south to the north along the west wall uh, during the firefighting operations, a portion of that wall had collapsed. So the collapse had already begun to say nothing of the collapse that occurred last April of the storm. So um, the, the idea was to get down the height of the walls, which then would eliminate the hazard of material falling out into traffic or uh, into pedestrians or across the road to hit adjacent buildings, get it down to about a one floor level, contain the site, and then we'll regroup and go back at the cleanup. Uh, I'm still waiting for a phone call back from the Illinois EPA as to how we need to handle the material so we didn't want to uh, be too hasty in, in taking that material to a, a transfer station or someplace that it didn't belong. So after tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow, when this phase of the project is concluded, we'll stop, we'll fence the area with a secure fence, a six-foot tall fence that will hopefully prevent anybody from making entry into the site and we'll uh, proceed with a, uh, a formal bidding, uh, a bid letting then to do the remainder of the cleanup and the site work. And the council will be a part of the decision uh, for the RFP. Yes. Alderwoman Heineke. Yes. Well, Chuck, I'm going to ask you the dreaded question. Why was this man not keeping insurance on this building, especially after we just went through? Is it even your department? Did, who was, who's needed to be making sure this guy had insurance? Well, the bottom line is when, they, when Victor Horwitz received his loan back in 2003, the loan committee reviewed this loan, granted him a loan. Um, the building was the security on the building. There was no guarantee behind that. Um, he, to the best of my knowledge, proved that he had insurance when he purchased the building. Uh, the bottom line is, though, he hasn't been making mortgage payments, he hasn't making tax payments, and he hasn't kept his insurance. His response to us was that he could not get insurance on a vacant building. Your Honor. Uh, hold, hold on. Alderwoman Heineke, do you have any? I just, with giving him a loan, why did we not make sure he had insurance on this building? Other people that do this for a living honestly ha have insurance so we're going to be stuck with the bill that most likely the taxpayers are going to have to eat and horowitz is going to walk away scott -free. and i just think there's no accountabil accountability being well all women i wasn't here when this loan was made and all i can tell you was that when the loan committee reviewed this loan they made a decision to grant a direct loan the city has moved away from direct loans to participation loans for this very reason, where we do the bank does the due diligence on the loans. It's a much safer way to proceed with loans, and that's what we've done since about 2004. And it's been more effective. Uh, with direct loans, you run a risk of, of loans. And again, the, the planning development staff's not a bank. And all I can tell you is we do our best job evaluating loans, and the committees that review the loans, they make requests. Uh, we review them, and we, and we do our best job of monitoring But the bottom line, in this case, this was a default. The loan committee knew that, and they were monitoring it. The loan committee knew that there was no insurance being paid and him not making payments? Uh, no, I didn't say that. I said the loan committee knew this was a default. They, okay. knew, that no, they knew that the loan wasn't being paid. <coughs> they knew that the taxes weren't being paid. And nobody did anything about it? Well, we put a lot of requests into Mr. Horowitz, but there was no way to, to recapture that money. Alderwoman Lepper. Yes. How long have we known? I mean, was this something we just found out with legal, or have you guys known that he has not had insurance on this building for a period of time? No, we just found out that he didn't have insurance. So with all of our legal processings that we've been doing with Mr. Horowitz, we did not have that information about his insurance? Uh, that's correct. That's, that's, that's correct. Essentially, we're going backwards. We're looking at a 10-year-old file that was done, uh, you know, with a different with a different city planner two two administrations ago, and having to kind of make sense of what the process was at the time. I think what's a little confusing, and I know what I brought up here on Saturday, and I think what Terry is referring to is usually even with a loan, in most cases the insurance company will notify you if they're not paying their insurance 
to that insurance company that they're just no longer paying and no longer have insurance on the building. Was the city ever notified of this by the insurance company? I'm not aware of us being notified that he stopped carrying insurance. Any, any, yeah, Alderman Haberman. And Chuck, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the way that loan program worked originally, it was for high-risk loans, or not high-risk, but it was a, it was a UDEC? Give me the... It was a, you, well, you got to go back a yeah, long way. It, I, I don't want to go, I don't, no, I don't want to go how the earth hardened or anything like okay. that. Okay, let's just... Bottom line is... Give me the abridged the city, version. You see, <laughs> you see the couple UDAGs, Federal uh, Urban Development Action Grants, they were given to the city, loaned to businesses, the business paid the city, we recaptured that money, it turned into revolving loan right. funds. We've done probably 100 or so loans. Uh, we've had probably a 12, 13 percent default rate. But I was going to say, I mean, part of that was for people that would go for a j job creation that could not get money necessarily yeah. anywhere else. Typically, that's part of the process. And, and that's not excusing what happened here, but let's, let's just be honest about how the program it started. It was risk capital. It was risk capital. Okay. so. The other side of that is if somebody's not able to pay their loan and able to pay their taxes, they're darn well not going to pay their insurance. So I think that's probably naive to think that they would. So let's, you know, that, that's kind of past, that, that, that cart's left the barn as well. So I think where we're at is that, um, you know, my question is how are we paying for this? Because it is we are paying for it. And what, what's the plan at this point? Well, the recommendation that, I've, I've talked to administration about is that it, it, it's in the TIF district. The TIF allows for uh, demolition and acquisition of real estate. That would be my recommendation to the administration. Okay, and and this falls under the guidelines because it uh, using it for demolition as a as a it's going to be precursor a to redevelop. Absolutely. Correct? Okay. Thank you. Your Honor. Yes, hold on. How much money do we have right now in the TIF fund? Because I know when we were talking about parking lots a while back, we were a little short. So what amount are we at as of right now? Uh, I'm going to say 500,000 minus 28,000. Okay. And how much is this project estimated coming in at as of right now? You're asking me a question I can't answer. We'll know when we get the bids in, and you guys will be able to approve the approve the bids. Alderman Brink, is first. Just a real quick question. So when we get the building down and we put a fence around it. What's the bid length of the bid process, and how long will this? We're going to file the city's normal bidding procedures. So if it's a two-week bid or a 30-day bid, I haven't haven't got the code in front of me. We're going to file that procedure. We're first going to develop a bid um, for this. Uh, we've got to look at uh, obviously. We don't know if we're getting asbestos or not yet. Uh, we've had tons of calls on salvage issues. People want stuff. And we can make money. Uh, I don't know if we can sell a brick that's got asbestos on it. But oh. with all that said, <laughs> we're going to look at all those factors and try to get something put together next week or two, get something in front of you so you can review it and get it, at, get it in the paper. So we're looking at a, a week time frame before we actually submit Put it I, out for a bid. I, I don't know that for a fact because we got to work through the, the EPA. I would say we're probably two weeks out before we have something in front of you. But and then uh, we're the estimates I've done so far have been all wrong. <laughs> and then we're th then we're three weeks during the process, right? So probably, yes. we're five weeks out sitting there. Um, do we have the authority to remove the material from the site? That would be something I'll be working with legal on. Thank you. Yes, Alderman Farha. My question dovetails to a certain extent. Given all the history, given the fact he's defaulted, given the fact he's been uncooperative, given the fact that he didn't have insurance on the building, surely we'll take this now to a judge for foreclosure and forget about the deed in lieu. Well, that is correct. We're proceeding with the foreclosure. In fact, we're, we're hopefully going to get a consent foreclosure and, and be done with it that way. Good. Are there any additional questions? Thank you. Just one other yes. item. Our goal is to meet 7.30 in the morning uh, with IDOT and see if we can get 4th Street open. Okay. Thank you. Madam Clerk, any new business? Yes. Um, as you can see in front of us, we have about 12 baskets. These were put together by city employees for a United Way fundraiser. So I have tickets up here. They're a dollar a piece. If you want to come and buy some this afternoon, after the meeting, I'll be happy to sell them to you, and you can put your name on them, put them in whatever one you want. This Friday, we have our annual cookout um, out here in the parking lot in the plaza, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., walking tacos, soda, 
our water for three dollars, our two tacos, soda and water for five dollars. We also will have a bake sale, starts at 7.30 that morning, 50-50 drawing. Um, and again, we'll draw the basket to winners at 2.30 on Friday. And I think we also have a cake that's being donated that we'll take chances on too. So we hope you come down. This is open to the aldermen and the general public here and out there. So we hope to see you Friday or this afternoon after the meeting. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Gale. No new business, Your Honor. Alderwoman Mann. No new business, Your Honor. Alderman Deucer House. No new business, Your Honor. Alderman Bauer. No, sir. Alderman Holbrook. None, sir. Alderman Havermill. No, thank you. I just would like to alert the City Council and also uh, those in attendance and at home that the City of Quincy will have a September 11th ceremony uh, at City Hall, uh, in our City Hall parking lot at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, Brother Ed will be uh, leading those proceedings and will be uh, also there with members of our first responders. So especially in light of uh, uh, oh, especially in light of what happened uh, and, and the job that they did, I encourage everyone to be there and uh, uh, pay tribute to what happened on uh, September 11th. I uh, want to remind people of the Big Read uh, that they can go Thursday uh, to get the free book. I would recommend that to anyone. And um, that's all I have. Alderman Farha. Alderman Sasson. No, sir. Alderman Ryan. Alderman Lepper. No, thank you. Alderman Mussolino. Um, yes, Your Honor. Um, I just wanted to thank our fire department again, echo what, what has already been said with our fire department, um, Salvation Army, everyone that, that, that showed up, especially on a Friday night, um, you know, people out of town on vacation and everything. I think we had an outstanding turnout from everybody. Um, Michael and Chuck, thank you for spending your Saturday and your Sunday um, addressing these issues. Um, I think we were well represented, and it shows our pride in our town, and I'm proud of them. So thank you. Alderman Brink. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I just have a quick question for the Corporation Council. Um, we just recently, tonight, we approved a one-year contract for the airport manager. How does that conflict with this ordinance when the ordinance clearly says it was a four-year appointment? I'm going to have to have a reference to the – give me the, the – um, 7.008 for any personnel in Chapter 7. I'll have to review the ordinance and, and look at it, but uh, you got your mic on. Huh? I'll, I'll have to review the ordinance and uh, and get back because I, I, I'll have to check it out. Okay. Thank you. Yep. No other business, Your Honor. Alderman Heineke. Um, I need to refer to traffic the removal of two parking stalls on Main West to 12th in front of the bus shelter. Second. We have a motion a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Any additional business? Uh, Thursday night, Quincy Q&D plays Quincy High School, I think, soccer at Flint Stadium. Um, it is for the honor flight. If you come and watch, and there'll be 50-50 raffle and everything you can possibly think of. So it's for a great cause. Any additional business? Be it. Alderman Holschlag. Yes, I have one. Last week I brought to the or sent it to the traffic about painting uh, Jackson Street between uh, 8th and 12th for Notre Dame football. They gave her a blessing, but we'd like to do it this week, this Friday. So it has to go through council. So I'd ask for the council support. Second, please. We have a motion, a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Any no additional order business? Move, we adjourn. We have a motion, a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned.